again, everyone. I'm here today to share a small purchase of a few watercolors from a new handmade watercolor company, at least new to me, called Colors of the Iron Range. I learned of this company from another YouTuber. I believe she goes by her billowing heart and she has a great YouTube channel, so I highly recommend it. I'll actually put a link to her YouTube channel below. Uh, but the colors that she had just looked so interesting and so I went and checked this out and I selected some off of their website and that's what we have here today. So I'm going to take these out of the box, unwrap them, and then swatch them. And this will be my first experience with these as well, so I'm really excited. So I'm going to get these out of the box here. They're almost like little candies. I always feel that way when things are individually wrapped like this. Oh, and she also included a little sample color, this ultramarine blue, I think that says very dark, uh, probably because I did not include any blues in my selection here. But uh, let's see, I'm gonna unwrap these first and then I will go ahead and swatch them. I have a little book off here to the side. So I kinda wanna see, whoa, these are like really, they're really sealed here. I want to see how they are um, how they are underneath all this packaging to see if they actually have any markings on the individual pans. If not, I will um, I will need to write on them. So I ha I do have a permanent sharpie off here to the side. Wow, these are really well wrapped. So let's see might take me longer than I expected because they are well wrapped. So I asked for magnets on the back and it looks like they're just, you know, typical you cut yourself magnets. And it doesn't, okay, so this is labeled with the color number but not the pigment number. So I probably will write the pigment number on each of these. So this one is Mars Red and before I move on, let me write, I'm gonna write on the back part, PR 101, oops, P. R101. That's just for my reference so that I know what it is. I'm going to put that off to the side. Okay, now I'm going to try and get in here a little bit more efficiently just because these are so tightly wrapped and sealed here. That's good. I mean, you want that when you're <laughs> ordering from someone. You don't want them to come out of their packaging, which I think there is no danger of that here. And they're also they also have this nice little layer of um, parchment on top or wax paper. Okay, now I'm not even going to try to pronounce what color this is, but it is a yellow that comes from materials that come from Iceland. And um, Icelandic is a crazy language. Oh, and I don't see I don't see a pigment number on this one. It might not have one if it's just out of natural materials. So I'm going to put that aside there. This one does have a pigment number. It is uh, PY153, and this is dioxine yellow. Did I tell you what that first one was? That first one was Mars red, and then we have a unpronounceable <laughs> one from Iceland that is yellow. But yeah, the Icelandic one might not have a pigment pigment number. So, oops, this one's stuck a little bit. Okay, we'll see if we can get that off when I'm doing that. When I'm doing the swatches. Oh, and this one does have the pigment number on it. Okay, that's interesting. So they're not necessarily consistent in how they are labeled. Not that that's a huge problem. Here, I'm just laying out these little labels. I probably will keep these. Sometimes I keep things like this. Um, so that I can put it into uh, collage or something later. And this one is Kaput Mortem Violet, which does, it's PR 101. Let's see if that one's labeled or whether I need to label it. Oh boy, the unwrapping of these is taking a lot longer than I anticipated. Let me try. So this one does not have the pigment number on there, so I am going to write it. This one is also PR101. That's interesting. I got two different, two different PR101s. And then this is a potter's pink, 
which also has a pigment number of PR233. And my goodness, these really are very well wrapped. And this one does not have the pigment number either, so I'm going to write that on there. Oops, it looks like this one might be sticking a little too. So that is PR233. Okay, and then this is the last one. It is Ultramarine Red, which is PR259. Put this down a little bit so you can see them for now. always getting notices whenever I'm on a uh, on the camera here <laughs> let's see so that again does not have the pigment number PR259 okay so that was a little tedious sorry about that but let me get in here I'm just gonna line these up um, I think I'm gonna put the the yellows next to each other and um, let's see, we have Mars red. Okay, just gonna put them in that order there. And then I do have a Pentallic book. I'm gonna put these out of the frame here. A Pentallic sketchbook that I'm gonna be doing the swatches in. I already have some things on this page. So let me see. But I figured this would be a good spot for it. I have a lot, I was doing a lot of color mixing tests here, but I'm going to go ahead and swatch these here on this page. So I have some water off to the side. I'm just wetting my brush. The brush that I'm going to be using is this Quill 10 slash 0 Jackson's Icon brush. I will put a link to this down below. It's one of my favorites. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and start with this first one here It ha that has a little bit of the uh, wax paper that rubbed off onto it. Okay, that's beautiful. So this is the dioxine yellow. One of the reasons why I chose this color is because it was so nice and bright. I really liked that. Okay, and then we have, oh, let's see, Heidelvisker yellow. That was totally a butchering of what this really is. And it looks like some of that, um, like some of that wax from the wax paper has indeed come off on this and it's a little hard to re-wet. Let's see, oh yeah, I'm getting like nothing. Because on the swatch there, it did have quite a bit of pigment. So let's see, might have to work at it a little bit to get it. Okay, there you go. But yeah, but it's very granulating and had some larger particles in there and I, it's really not a yellow I mean I would call that more a brown but I can see how um, there is a little bit of a yellow cast to it so that's really pretty okay and I chose these colors because I did want colors that were sort of interesting that I hadn't seen everywhere other than the potter's pink obviously and I guess Mars red people have seen Mars red before make sure this is all in the frame here oh and that's a lovely Mars red I love that that's really really beautiful it's really saturated and pretty okay this is ultramarine red and seems like most of these have been easier to re-wet than that one so ultramarine red tends to be a little bit lavender in most brands that I've seen. So this is no different, but it's really very pretty. I'm actually gonna put these next two down below. So this one is the Potter's Pink. And I seem to be getting a lot of different brands of Potter's Pink. This is actually a beautiful Potter's Pink. It is really smooth, um, seems to re-wet fairly easily actually compared to some other brands. These are lovely. I'm really, really liking these. This is the Kaput Mortem Violet. And I can't forget about the, oh, that's beautiful too. Yeah, these are great neutrals. 
I love these. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna try out this sample of the Ultramarine. These are a joy to paint with, I have to say. Oh, and that's a lovely Ultramarine. Yeah, I may have to go back and get some other colors because these are just amazing. And I'm really loving how this pink, this Potter's Pink is granulating and um, it's just beautiful. All of these colors are really beautiful. I mean, obviously I picked colors that I was attracted to, but um, I'm really, really happy with this assortment. So again, this one is Dioxin Yellow. This one is that unpronounceable yellow from Iceland. The pigment itself is from Iceland. This is Mars Red. This is Ultramarine Red. This is Potter's Pink. Kaput Mortem Violet. And then this is Ultramarine, Ultramarine Blue Very Dark. Um, I don't know how very dark I think that is. I mean, some you can see some French ultramarines that are this that are this deep here, but it's really, really beautiful. And I'm also gonna give you a close-up of those. I was already pretty far in, but you can really see as they're drying, the granulation is really starting to show up really nicely. The only one that I got, I think, that is not granulating is this dioxine yellow but it's very bright and vibrant and so pretty. Okay, well those are winners. I would say just based on this little test here, I would highly recommend these handmade watercolors. I'll put a link to the website below so that you can check them out for yourself if you want to. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. It was just a short one. Most of it was unwrapping, sorry about that. Well, I've, you know, at least I built the anticipation for the actual colors. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel, and I hope to see you there. All right, take care. Bye.